right now in the area I'm in and this is a view from the local ski area Sunshine Village and they have a live webcam. One of the more popular programs to get an overview of the fire smoke and its effects on North America is a program that was developed by University of British Columbia a few years ago and uh, I'll put the links for all these programs in the description below. This is from firesmoke.ca under their forecasts and this is the current forecast and as you can see here the areas that are covered by this forecast are bounded by this black line box and it gives a pretty quick overview to zoom in on my area and we can see here that the darker more intense brown color represents the higher intensity of the smoke which is centered over the fires themselves and down here on the lower left is the slider which you can pause and then you can move through frame by frame if you want to get a more granular idea of what's going to happen for your area at a particular point in time and you can also see here on the legend the uh, density of the smoke particulate matter expressed over here so what I like about this and the thing you can note will be uh, it gives me a pretty quick look at where the most intense fires are burning that may be affecting us and then if you play the um, <clears throat> the slideshow of it you can see uh, a general direction as to which way that smoke is flowing and then from there you can get an idea of how you might be affected so that is the quick and dirty way uh, that is probably the most popular in my area for looking at fire smoke and I think I've noticed a lot of the media when they're giving their weather will also fall back to this program. There is another alternative to this firesmoke.ca model that I just showed previously and this one is an experimental one that comes from NOAA and they're out of the United States. So what we're seeing here is the high resolution rapid refresh and the rapid refresh models uh, the HRRR and the RAP and while they share some similarities there are a few key differences between these two models particularly in terms of their smoke charts so first of all uh, it's with respect to the HRRR um, it has a higher spatial resolution compared to the RAP model it has a grid spacing of three kilometers while the RAP model has a coarser resolution of 13 kilometers and the higher resolution allows the HRRR model to capture fine scale details of weather phenomena and in this case of course smoke dispersion so the HRRR is updated um, every hour so it provides more frequent forecast while the wrap model is updated every six hours and then we can see here we have composite reflectivity we've got vertically integrated smoke and uh, well as well as a lot of other stuff near surface smoke and um, for me I found that the best way was just to play with all those settings spend some time with it and check it out um, so the HRRR smoke charts uh, they may cover a shorter period of time but they offer more frequent updates and in terms of availability uh, they both provide smoke charts that display the simulated distribution of movement of smoke particles in the atmosphere as you can see here and uh, this is giving uh, an area that jots up just into Canada for our area and covers both southern Alberta, British Columbia, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, 
further up into Ontario and Quebec, but for the states it's pretty comprehensive and touches down into parts of Mexico, almost hits Cuba, but does get Florida and so on. So this alternative that I have found to be handy for cross-checking what I'm looking at in my area and if you don't want to make it too cluttered um, just use one view at a time and experiment with what's working better for you between the uh, wrap chart and the HRRR chart for example let's compare surface smoke here and in my area I have to roughly interpolate where it would be I'm seeing a, a darker colored red and if we refer back to the surface visibility chart up here in the upper right hand side of the screen we can see that the intensity of that is a lot darker and that's on wrap now let's go over to the HRRR and we can see here that I have a similar distribution for those. So there's another one to play with and see how you fare with that as compared to the firesmoke.ca chart. Use your mouse wheel to uh, zoom in and out and to get higher resolution when you require it for your particular area. For those of you not living in North America and also want to gain a larger overview, Weather Underground has their Wonder Map uh, product that allows you to chart different variables. And um, we'll take a look at that now. You would go over to the right hand panel and click on Layers and under these layers on the column on the right you can pick active fires as well as smoke and then we are going to also pick wind stream. Under wind stream we will slow down the speed of those moving arrows and we will put the filter at one mile per hour and then we will collapse that to get a bigger overview. It's kind of interesting to note that if we look down uh, at South America, Africa, and Australia, we're still seeing a number of wildfires down there. Zooming in on our area now, uh, this will give me an overview of what I can expect for how the winds may be affecting things in terms of bringing the smoke into me. Uh, these circles of smoke, uh, whereas they do reflect some areas, um, in my area for example there's nothing there and we're having quite a smoky day today. So this is just uh, here for illustration purposes as to what you might want to expect. Uh, I've also got on here the radar for showing some of the weather systems are moving through and uh, when we get further into this we can see how sometimes it may be helpful to know where these active storm systems are so we don't confuse the cloud buildup associated with them with uh, smoke and we're also going to go into looking at uh, how the smoke differs in terms of the reflective light spectrum uh, from clouds. Now I would like to go down the rabbit hole a bit further and turn to my favorite set of charts from the College of DuPage and they are uh, fairly well known in the USA for people that are interested in storm chasing. They have courses on it but there are a lot of great resources on their site and what we're looking at here right now 
is the GOES, which stands for Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite Imagery. And the most commonly used chart is the GOES 16 and GOES 17 True Color RGB, uh, which is red, green, blue imagery. And that's what we're looking at right now. And we're doing a continental sector uh, view here. And then in order to zoom down on to your area, you would go to regional sectors. And then also you can look at sub-regional sectors, localized sectors, and so on. So more things for you to experiment with if you're really interested in getting down into this subject. So um, there's more, however. So the ABI bands offer quite a few differences in what is available. And um, it's worth playing with those. So ABI, that uh, is something new that they introduced as an enhanced satellite service. Uh, ABI is uh, acronym for Advanced Baseline Imager. And what it is, is it's an instrument in the satellite that measures various bands of the electromagnetic spectrum and it monetizes, it monitors weather conditions. Uh, and that includes the detection of the wildfires. So ABI operates in quite a few different spectral bands and each band has got its own specific characteristic and purposes, but there are more than one of them which can shed some light on uh, wildfires. For example, um, although the true color visible bands, here I'm just clicked on visible blue, um, also shows a lot of uh, differences or in terms of what you can see in the atmosphere. Uh, one of the things that I found interesting, so uh, another thing I should mention here is that the best time to visualize smoke that gets picked up on the satellite views for in infrared and visible is during times when the sun's angle is at the steepest in terms of your location. So if you use the slider, you can see everything turning dark here. And here you can see when the sun is rising from the east. And as morning comes over your particular area, the angle of the sun makes it easier to differentiate fire smoke from clouds. And so when I was playing with this, I found of interest um, the particulate size for when it was night. And I noticed that for my particular area. You'll have to get a little bit more granular in order to uh, zoom in on that. But why is that? Well, um, during the day, the near-infrared band, it's particularly useful for detecting wildfires because it can identify active flames and the thermal energy emitted by the fire. However, at night, like we see here, and what I'm going to do now is go into um, a regional sector that will get me closer to my area. And so I can show you what I mean in terms of where I know that the fires are. So let's go down to when it's dark now in British Columbia. And so here the sun has set. And as I play the slider here, I'd like to focus your attention in this area here where we've seen the most intense wildfires are in British Columbia. And this is night. It's again, it's particulate size. And look how we can see that in the dark showing up. And uh, right through until when the sun rises. And then we can start seeing the smoke. And how, how do we see the smoke? And why is it different than the clouds? Well, you can see here in 
terms of uh, dispersion intensity and hue, you can start to get a feel of what to look for of the smoke. So why is it the, the nighttime one shows up those guys? You may ask, like, there we are here. Well, it um, is partly due during nighttime observations, the presence of wildfires may still be visible due to the presence of the smoke and the aerosols emitted by the fire itself. So these smoke particles and aerosols can scatter and reflect the incident radiation in the ABI band. And this is the value of having this instrument on the satellites, the ABI, because it using that leads to the detection on the particle size chart. So the particle size chart represents the size distribution of the particles in the atmosphere and that includes smoke and aerosols. So by analyzing the characteristics of the scattered reflected radiation, the ABI can provide valuable information about the extent and behavior of these wildflower fires wildflower, sorry that's our local bakery, even during nighttime like we see here. So um, you know the appearance of wildflowers on the particle size chart it really does vary depending on factors such as the size and intensity of the fire and the composition of the smoke particles not to mention the, the sensitivity of the ABI band that's being utilized has a huge impact. So ABI is probably going to become more and more refined as time goes on and this would be something to keep an eye on. Now the most common way to look at uh, the dispersion of wildfire smoke from uh, the GOES satellite and the one we're looking at here again is one from my area which is uh, the true color imagery from the GO satellite for Western Canada. Now, true color is um, basically what it says, what you're looking at, and it interprets basically the visible blue and the visible red areas of the spectrum, which makes it a little easier. You can see if you play with um, also selecting visible blue and visible red you can also see some smoke but what is the difference between that and true color let's go back to yesterday and again I want to focus on this area where I know all those fires are and how it I'm right here um, at CWZG station and so what I want to do is visualize how that smoke has been affecting us and you can see yesterday uh, when I was out for a hike in the mountains uh, I had a bit of haze but it wasn't nearly as bad as it is right now so this goes back and let's look at what happened with that smoke now it was dark overnight and then as we come into the sunrise this morning what I can see is now this smoke has come down and covered our area. It looks to me like southeastern British Columbia and southern Alberta would have less density of haze than us and then this brings me right up to right now while I'm speaking and what I can see here to differentiate the smoke you can see here how the smoke is a darker brown brownish color than the clouds and so the reason for that in you know wildfire smoke is not confined to a visible uh, spectrum such as the red or blue uh, it can have an impact on multiple parts of the spectrum and that depends on the composition and size of the smoke particles. So in general smoke consists of tiny particles such as soot and ash and other aerosols and they scatter and absorb light in various ways so the interaction with these particles can cause changes in the appearance 
and color of the smoke plume, which you can see here over the CYXT station. And um, when those particles are relatively large or the concentration is high, like it is here, they tend to scatter shorter wavelength light more effectively. And this scattering can lead to the smoke appearing bluish or grayish in color, uh, which would be over in here. So you can see the differentiation in here between that high concentration plume and the dispersion of that smoke as it starts to mix more with atmospheric air. And uh, so in this case, visible blue wavelengths may be more affected by the smoke particles. And that results in a more noticeable impact on the blue part of the spectrum. However, smoke particles can also absorb light particularly in the longer wavelength regions such as red. And this absorption can cause a reddening or a brownish appearance in the smoke like we see over here. And that leads to a more pronounced impact on the red part of the spectrum. So therefore, the appearance of wildfire smoke in satellite imagery can vary depending on the size, the density, and the composition of the smoke particles and as well the lighting conditions and viewing angle as I've pointed out why it's best to view it when the Sun is on the greatest angle because then the refraction of the light through the smoke particles is more pronounced and easier to see with the human eye. So um, that's why perhaps your best bet in visualizing the smoke for your area would be to have the RGB color product, the true color, and visualize it from there. However, I also would recommend just playing with some of the ABI bands for shits and giggles because it is kind of interesting, as I pointed out, um, as well as the uh, particle size. I also noticed that even if you click on the snow ice, near infrared it can show some interesting results. So I have a client in Tennessee and he is down in the southeast corner. I think the closest uh, known spot that I would recognize would be Chattanooga and excuse me if I've bastardized the pronunciation of that after all I am a relatively uneducated Canadian. So what I wanted to do now was just basically delve down into uh, choosing your area and relating that to the satellite imagery and how you could use it to see where you are. And as well, there are, seems to be very uh, more granular areas uh, where websites will look up the uh, fire smoke for your area. So what I did was I just googled uh, wildfire smoke in Tennessee and I came up with this map and I see here when I can click on it I will get um, smoke light density from the GOES East satellite image and uh, that would be this one and followed the uh, progression of the clouds and whatnot. And you can see here that the area I was concerned with shows up there. And that what that just happened there was the satellite just refreshed on me in real time. And so we're getting the latest image from about 10 seconds ago. So you could use this in combination with your local wildfire smoke maps to perhaps figure out what's going on in your particular area. Again, just uh, use Google to put wildfire smoke map and your location in and see what comes up for what you can get. But I basically always default down to the GOES map, which in fact it's doing, and then um, you can play around with 
the various images and you can see here as the sun came up how that affected those different areas and what we're picking up here it's it's harder because we're getting more in terms of the uh, storms and the convective activity in some of these areas as opposed to the fire smoke. Now here's something that may help you in terms of um, differentiating the smoke from the clouds or the active weather systems especially when starting out because as I said when it's just sunrise as you can see here as the sun is rising across the eastern USA um, there's already some active storm systems showing up here uh, for example here and then let's look down here and off the coast near I believe it is Pensacola up in that area so let's go up to the present time and see what we've got and how do we know which is the cloud cover for example well for that I can go to the National Weather Service and what have we got here we can see some of those active uh, storms right now and let's look down here if we go east of Pensacola uh, and then up at Mobile or, I'm sorry Mobile and uh, let's look here between Jackson and uh, Tuscaloosa there's quite the storm system in there that I'm sure that the storm watchers will be following around today and um, let's go back here and see how that looks in terms of the go satellite imagery while well, we can see it all there and so we know that that isn't smoke uh, and practice with that where you do a composite uh, mosaic or comparison between what you know are uh, storm systems that are showing up on the satellite imagery and uh, are clearly are not smoke related as in there and don't forget if you want to get closer in uh, using this College of DuPage site you can go and look at the sub-regional sectors for example um, here we can pick this one and then we get a zoomed in view of what we were just looking at for the areas uh, for example here east of Pensacola and um, you can even go down a little grainier and um, go to the localized sectors as well and that may help when you're looking at these things in terms of uh, differentiating clouds from smoke and again um, I'd recommend go to the true color band and then use your slider to uh, have a look at how things uh, were unfolding when the sun was rising.